Yo, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it's the one and only, your boy, the legend, Honcho J23, and we are back with another special episode edition of Independent Scene Podcast. I want to take this opportunity right now to welcome you guys to the platform, welcome you guys to the channel. If you are new to this, please feel free to be to be yourself, express yourself. Uh, feel free to drop comments, uh, show love, show support. It's all it's all positivity this way, all good vibes this way. Uh, like I said, thank you for thank you all for joining me tonight. We got a really dope artist in the building. He goes by the he goes by the name of Jay the One. I definitely can't wait to chop it up with him. See what he's been had going on. Uh, like I said, this is a special edition of Independent of Independent Scene Podcast. Like I said, I want to thank you guys for joining me. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for always watching and supporting and showing love. It means the world to me. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, I definitely cannot wait to get my guests in here, man. He is truly. Uh, a he is truly a phenomenal and incredible artist. I've had the pleasure of seeing him perform, seeing him, uh, seeing him go, you know, seeing him doing his thing. Um, and he is just like I said again, he's just truly a a a a, a an awesome individual to say the least. You know what I'm saying? So, guys, give me one second. I'm gonna get my man's in here, and then we're gonna go for what we know. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, like I said, I appreciate y'all, man. I appreciate y'all for rocking with me for you know what I'm saying for this for this journey. It's truly been amazing. Can't wait to see what's next for this for this for this podcast that I'm doing. Um like I said, uh also real quick, so with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome my guest tonight on a very, very special edition of Independent Scene Podcast, the homie and the bro, Jada One. Let's get it. All right, trying to get my man, trying to get my man's in, trying to get him in here, guys. Trying to get him in here. I hope you guys will enjoy tonight's ep- tonight's edition, man. It's gonna be dope. It's gonna be special. You know what I'm saying? It always is special. You know what I'm saying? We chop it up with people. You know what I'm saying? Chop it up with the folks. Hold on, bro. I'm trying to get you in here. <clears throat> There we go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My boy, what's, what's up, man? What's going on, brother? How you feeling, man? Man, I'm chilling, man. How you doing, brother? Cooling, man. Cooling, man. That's, hey, you, you're a real busy man, I see. Man, man, you don't even know the half of it, bro. Always on the move, man. But you know how it go, man. You most definitely. Most definitely. Well, first of all, man, let me just say welcome to the platform, man. Uh, I'm so honored to have you on the on the platform tonight on the channel tonight. It's definitely gonna be dope. We're definitely can't wait to dive to, to hop right in and you know get to know you and your and your and your background, your music and stuff. So real quick, I'm gonna shut up. I'm gonna let you introduce yourself and then we're gonna jump right into it. Facts, man. What's going on, everybody, man? You already know what it is, man. It's your boy Jay the One, aka Mr. Finesse himself. You know what I'm saying? And here with my boy Hancho J. Shout out to my LBZ. I see him down there. What's up, Joe? You already know. Um. <laughs> Yeah, man, my boy, Hancho, he, man, he, he hit me up about the podcast, man. When he hit me up the first time, I was out of it, dog. I was on the move. I was trying to handle business, but I'm, I'm finally here, you know what I'm saying? So now we finna get to it, finna get to most, it. Most definitely, like I said, I, again, like I said, man, I definitely, you know, want to, you know, and let you know before we start, man, feel free to be yourself, feel free to, you know, feel free to express yourself how you see fit. You know, I so said this is a this is a a, a, a non judgment a non judgment show. It's raw, <laughs> uncensored. Be be, be as free as you want to be, my brother. You feel me? Right. Appreciate that, man. Appreciate that. Great. Most definitely. So first things first, man. The name Jay the One. Where did it come from? AKA Finesse. Where did that come from? Talk to us about the name. Uh, well, AKA Mr. Finesse himself, Finesse man. That's that's been my Instagram name since I was like in high school. It was okay. always something I just kind of you know. I kind of went with, and when I came to uh, college and I went to uh, Central, shout out to the Eagles. Okay. Um, I just never changed it. I just kind of stuck with it. I kept going with it, and it was just that was just my name, aka Finesse. So, Finesse to me, like I know a lot of people probably think about the word Finesse, and they probably think about you know like niggas like trying to steal stuff and you know do yeah, a whole bunch yeah. of grimy stuff. But to me, you know, to me, Finesse is more than that. You know, you could you could be a good Finesse. You know what I'm saying? Making a way out of no way. That's really what it means to me. 
You know, yeah. trying to make find a way to make it happen. And when you do, I mean, you finessed it, you know. So that's just kind of me with the finesse. As far as Jada One, though, um, you know, when I was in college, I played um, Kappa Kappa Psi, you know, uh, the band fraternity. I'm in the band. I've been in the band forever. That's, you know, a lot of where the music come from. But um, my line name was The Wonder, you know what I'm saying? So I kind of just dropped the last part and just kept the one, you know what I'm saying? Um, but it means a lot more to me. A lot. It means a lot more to me than just that, though. Um, I feel like for a while, you know, I've always been the one to always, like, make, you know, something happen, like, no matter what. Like, when I was growing up, you know, I was always the one that people kind of singled out to do stuff, and I was always the one that people always had, you know, something to say about when I was a kid. And then growing up, you know, it just kind of stuck with me. Like, I was always kind of, like, the one. Like, no matter where I was at, like, I was that one dude that was doing X, Y, Z or something like that, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to sis down there. I see you. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, bro. So I just, I don't know. When I started uh, taking music back seriously here recently, you know, I was thinking about what, you know, to call myself. And I didn't want to, you know, put too much thought into it. You know what I'm saying? I'm just me. That's really, you know, I'm just me. I ain't nobody else. I ain't trying to be nobody else. So I'm just, I'm just J the one, man. I'm just the one. Okay. Okay. Like, really most definitely, most definitely. Well, I listen, bro. Like, you know, it's always refreshing and it's always good to, you know, not only get to know the artist aside from when you see them at shows, but when you get to literally have a, a, a conversation with them and be able to, to understand the background and the, and the way that you came up with the, with the idea, it's, it's totally refreshing, man. So definitely, yeah. so definitely man, a unique name, man. Um, I definitely... <laughs> Uh, you know, I've been supporting you for a little minute, man, and I definitely am yeah. liking what I'm seeing from you. So, congrats to you on everything that you got going on, man, for real. I appreciate that, bro, for real. It's only the beginning. It's only the yeah. beginning, for sure. Most, de most de So, real quick, um, tell us a little bit about your growing up, man. What was growing up like for you as a kid, man, and, and stepping into your own as a man and realizing what it was that you wanted to do in life? What was that growing up process like? Uh, man, growing up, man, you know, everybody have, you know, they they own story. Everybody had their own struggles and challenges and everything. And of course, you know, same goes for me and stuff. Um, I ain't gonna go, you know, too into detail with it, but you know, I had a lot of issues, you know, that I had to kind of deal with growing up. But um, you know, my grandma, she started me with music real early. Uh, she was the uh, the kids' choir director at um, the church we was going to. So of course, with her being the choir director, I had to sing. Right, right. So I was singing as a little kid early, man. This little right. light of mine, one lamb, all that, bro, you know. Um, but when I got older, you know what I'm saying, I just kind of wanted to step back away from the music as far as, like, singing. I wanted to learn how to play instruments and stuff because I ain't, I ain't never really liked, you know, being, like, the guy in the front like that. Sometimes, you know, I just like to chill. So mm -hmm. I wanted to learn how to play the drums and play the guitar and all that stuff. But, um, you know, I uh, eventually I had joined the school band uh, when I was in, like, the sixth grade, when I was in the sixth grade, I joined the band. And that's when I really knew, like, yeah, like, I really like music. And I had a couple homies, like my boy TJ, um, his name, uh, you, me, and Tommy, Tommy Fomo on Instagram. My boy Kelsey, K Fresh on Instagram. We grew up together, you know what I'm saying, from Tarboro. And um, they were doing music. They were rapping, you know what I'm saying, writing and singing and stuff. And I saw that, and I was like, whoa, like, I fuck with it, you know what I'm saying? So I, um, I used to kick it with them a lot. And I used to just, you know, kind of pick up things here and there from them. And I used to, you know, write music and try to make beats and stuff like that. Like, i say I was doing that from, like, seventh grade, eighth grade to, like, I was, like, a sophomore at high, yeah, sophomore at high school. Mm -hmm. um, around that time, though, you know what I'm saying, it was getting time for, you know, getting close to people to graduate, think about what they're doing next. And a lot of people was in my ear at the time, like, man, you need to leave that music alone, man. You need to find you something that's going to, you know, make you some money one day. You know what I'm saying? You need to go to school, major in engineering, you need to go to school and major in, you know, uh, nursing or whatever, just so you can get that bread. And I'm like, man, the music, the music is me. Like, I'm not, you know, I'm not really concerned about, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I used to tell people all the time, I'm going to be rich regardless. I'm not worried about, you know, how I'm going to do it. I just know, mm -hmm. what's gonna happen, you know what I'm saying? And it is, you know, very, very, very soon. But, um, <laughs> Yeah, man, I just, you know, I wasn't really with the idea of going to school for, like, four or five years doing something that I didn't care about. So I, uh, I graduated, and I came to Central to uh, major in music and everything. Um, but as far as, like, me making my own music, I kind of stepped back from it for a while 
so that I could, you know, really focus on graduating and get my degree and stuff. But I um I still always, you know, I always wrote some lyrics down whenever I was in, you know, that zone and I just felt that, you know, I would go to my my iCloud and, you know, go to my notes and, you know, type some stuff down. And um that was just me for a while, man. Like I st- like when I stepped back from the music, I stepped back, bro. Mm-hmm. Um but here recently, you know, during the quarantine, man, um, you know, everybody was locked up in the crib and everybody was just, you know, doing whatever. Right, and, right. Um, me at the time, I was I was in my last semester before I graduated from school with my degree. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was just like, dang, man, like I'm about to graduate this music degree. I'm finally about to, you know, get to moving with this career in music and stuff. And I'm like, mm-hmm. dang, like it's been a while since I really like, you know, did some music on my own, like my own mm-hmm. music. Like mm-hmm. with me being in the band, you know, I used to write music for the band to play all the time, but it would be other people's music, you know. So I'm like, damn, let me get back on my own bag and get my own music going. So I used to, you know, write a little bit here and there. Um, but I ain't never really like go to no studio to record or anything like that. Um, my boy Taz, my boy Taz, he hooked me up during the quarantine, man. He um he pulled up on me with his producer. Cause I hit him up. I was like, man, I'm trying to record something real quick, bro. I'm trying to record something real quick. Let me, let me come with you real quick. But he pulled up on me to my crib, his producer, you know what I'm saying? Showing mm-hmm. straight love. Like, that's my boy. I put mm-hmm. him a long way. He made music too. Him and his producer. But, um, you know, they pulled up on me and I recorded, um, it was some freestyle, bro. On, um, one of little baby beats. I don't even remember what song it was, but it was one of little baby beats. And I had wrote a freestyle on it. And that joint sounded, bad bro that's like, <laughs> oh my god not bad that's that much out there bad bro but like yeah listen, listening to it though like, i was like damn bro i know i could do better than this it's been a minute since i like recorded some music but i know i can do better than this so i just stuck with it for a little while longer and i just you know kept writing and kept writing and then um around the end of the summertime my line sister kelly she, mm-hmm. you know, she was coming uh to durham she was in greensboro for the summer she was coming back to durham and uh, she told me, she's like, man, I'm about to uh, put me in the studio together, man. I'm about to, you know, get this music joint going down here. And I'm like, word, okay, for sure. Like, I'm going to come through, show some love and shit. So I pulled up on her her career, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. she's making music. She, you know, linking up with different artists and stuff. And that's how I met up with Romeo because he was over there recording at her house, too. So, um, you know, we was in there, you know, vibing. And that was just going on for, like, weeks, you know what I'm saying? Like, I it got to the point where I was getting in there. I was recording, too, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I wasn't really thinking too much of it at first. I, I mean, I just wanted, you know, kind of use that to, you know, get off my chest, whatever I was feeling at the time. But um, Kelly and Romel, they both came to me and they was like, yeah, man, you know, you really, you know, you got that, you know, you got that style, man. You got the bars, you know, like you need to take the music more serious, man. Like, come rock with us. We about to build a team. I'm like, okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? So uh, at first I was kind of hesitant about it because, like I said, I was in my last semester of school. I was like, man, I need to go ahead and, you know, Boom, 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 graduate, get up, get up out of here. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, I decided to, you know, go ahead with it. And, um, yeah, man, it was crazy, man. Like, we got back, um, you know, straight with everything after, you know, they talked to me about it. And after that point, we were just dropping, you know, not dropping, but we were just, you know, making music, making music, making music. Um, around the end of 2020, you know what I'm saying, we was, you know, getting ready to drop, make it move, you know what I'm saying. We recorded the tracks. We got everybody's mm-hmm. verses up there. You know, we got Carmen, um, Carmen the Kill. Shout out to the Kill, man. She hard, hard, bro. She hard. Um, and we got everybody versus up there. We went out, um, recorded a music video. Like it was, it was, fu- it was pulling together, man. Like piece by piece by piece. And then, um, you know, New Year's drop. We dropped the song. We dropped the video. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? People, and people was paying attention. Like people were like, oh snap! Like what's going on? Who's the family? Like you know, who's yeah. that? And I was like, yeah, you know, this this just, you know, just the start of it. And then follow back, right back, you know what I'm saying, with um the video and the song, I'm mean, on the single for about it in February, you know what I'm saying, right back to back the next month. So um, you know, we were just we just hit the ball rolling from there, you know what I'm saying? Um then around March for my birthday, you know, I dropped my track twenty four with the video. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I was definitely happy and excited about that. You know, and then the the following month after that, you know, uh, we released Spontaneous with the performance video that we did when we was in Raleigh performing it. So, you know, it was just content after content after content, you know. Um, so, yeah, it was just I just seen the opportunity and I took it. And then thankfully, you know, with, you know, things happening here and there, 
you know, things just kind of started coming together, you know. And now okay. it's kind of at the point where, you know, it's like it's time. <laughs> it's time, you know. Okay. Okay. Well, wow, man. What's, what, what, that was such a very, um, to me, in my opinion, a very mind blowing response, man, and a, def a definitely impactful one at that, to say the to say the least. So right. definitely, man. It's it, again, it's always refreshing to hear, you know, the artist's point of view and get to hear them from not just a stage standpoint, but from a, from but from a personal standpoint. So, um, I, we definitely appreciate that response. So let me ask you this, man. So, what got you into music? Like, what what really made you, like you said? start taking it serious and be like, yo, this is a dream that I want to continue to, to, to pursue. Yeah. Um, well, man, I don't know. I mean, well, I ain't gonna say that. I do know. Uh, like I said, music always, always been a big part of my life for real, man. Um, ever since I was, you know, in middle school, I always been a part of the band, but ever since then, you know, I always been writing my own music too. So it was just something that just kind of came easy to me. Um, when I, came to Central, like I said, I took a break from it for a while because I was just trying to focus on graduating, but I was still writing. You know, I was still making, you know, beats here and there, but it wasn't nothing that I was like, I'm going to just drop, I'm going to just drop. Mm -hmm. I had like a lot of, I had a lot of responsibility when I was in school. You know, I was drum major. I was chapter uh, president for my organization. You know, I was involved in things all over campus. So, you know, I ain't really have time to really just go to the studio and do what I wanted to do. I ain't had time to go, you know, do promo and show up at shows and, you know, all that stuff. So when I graduated, I was like, man, I got this degree. Now it's time for me to, you know, use it, you know, get in the field and like teach for real. But um, a lot of people are like, man, you know, you should go ahead and do what you got to do, man. Cause you got it, bro. Like go with it, go with it, go with it. So, you know, like I said, I tried it out, you know, everything was good. You know, at first I was like, I'm gonna stick with it. Mm -hmm. And um, eventually, you know, just having conversations with different artists and, you know, getting game from people, um, you know, it eventually showed me that, you know, I can, I can balance out whatever kind of life I want. I just got to work for it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Around the time that I had dropped my single and video for 24, I had gotten in touch with um, Zaytoven, um, the producer. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I got a little game from him for real. He was just telling me like, Hey man, the world is yours. Like, you know, do what you got to do. All you got to do is just have a budget behind what you do. Like, just you know you can be yourself you ain't got to be like nobody else you can really just right, your right. Heart life for yourself you know and then um really getting a lot of game from a lot of local artists too you know what i'm saying like on just the importance of just owning your own stuff and being independent and just you know really not you know trying to follow the trend of trying to sign with every label and you know mm -hmm. it ain't about that you know it's about right. the music. it's about right. what you're doing you know so that's really how I look at it. It's a it's a marathon. It's not a race. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, again, definitely, I appreciate the response, man. So, let me ask you this, man. <clears throat> so, when it comes to social media, man, how beneficial has social media been for you? You know, uh, regarding your career and you know this, you know, you being, you know, uh, uh, you know, an artist out here in the Carolinas. Oh uh, man, social media is beneficial, man. It's it's really like. The social media is really like a business too, honestly and truly. Like, and it's crazy to see how it's progressed. Cause like when I was in high school, that was around the time where like Instagram first came out. Twitter mm -hmm. really just started popping. You know what I'm saying? Facebook had already been out, but now it was starting to really, you know, grow. Um, back then, you know, we had Vine and um and Voxer and all these other different little apps, but Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook was like the main three. And then just to see how it's progressed till now, like it's really it's really a business tool, man, and just, you know, having the availability to just link up with different artists and producers and, and other people that's in the business and, you know, just not just the music business either, you know, just regular entrepreneurs and stuff. Like, it's, it's a great tool, man. Um, I'm really trying to get in the habit of, like, getting better with it, you know what I'm saying, especially now that, you know, mainly my social media is mainly for business now. Um but I'm trying to, you know, get in a better habit of, like, posting more regularly on it. But, you know, it's just, um, you know, I've been busy. <laughs> okay. Okay. Busy. Now, now, all right. And, I, and, again, once again, appreciate that answer. Um, so, real quick, kind of switching gears, man. You know, we've been, we've been, you know, going through a lot lately, you know, with this whole, you know, pandemic situation, this whole police brutality, you know, social injustice, racial injustice, however you want to 
how you want to look at it, man. But, you know, as a, as a black man, as, as an artist, you know, what I want to know is how are you taking what's going on and incorporating some of that into your, into your mirrors, into your lyrics? Um, man, it, you're right. It is a whole lot going on, man. Every time you turn on the TV or every time you check your Instagram feed, there's always somebody, you know, of color getting whooped. And sometimes it don't even be people of color. Sometimes, you know, it'd be other, other, you know, ethnicities and stuff um, getting mistreated by the police. But um, honestly, man, it, it's definitely a lot to think about. And I, you know, I definitely, you know, um, have like different, you know, bits and pieces here of like some consciousness that really like speaks on, you know, what's going on in the world. And um, it's just, uh, I don't know. It's, it's really just a lot to think about, you know, but it's, it's something that we need people to think about. It's not something that we can just have people just, you know, just push off to the side and just think about whatever is the next popular thing. Like we, you know, the same way that, you know, during quarantine when everybody was just TTG for everything that was going on, like, you know, that just needs to be the standard, you know, it doesn't need to just be like, Oh, whenever you see somebody, you know, on Instagram getting beat up by the police, then you want to, you know, kind right. of say, I'm not. like you need to, you know, be on it all the time. Cause, whether we like it or not, you know, these police officers, they're going to do what they do, mm -hmm. you know? So the longer that we just, you know, get upset during the moment and then fall back and then just do whatever, you know, the worst is going to get. And it's, and it's, you know, it's not even that hard. All you really got to do is just be aware of what's going on, speak on things whenever you see something like in person, you know what I'm saying? And um, whenever you see something on social media, you know, give it a share. Ain't nothing, you know? Well, definitely. Okay. Okay. So now let me ask you this, man. You know, having the, 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 the fan base that you have and being connected with, you know, pretty much your followers and your and your fan base, what has that been like to you to know that you have people that genuinely and truly and sincerely follow you and support you 1,000% and back you, you know, the way that they do? Um, It feels good. It feels good, man. You know, a lot of times, you know, uh, people, they tend to uh, allow the followers that they have like whether it's like a big number or a small number, like they tend to let the followers kind of dictate, you know, how they feel about themselves as a person as, and as an artist, you know. Um, and I, I definitely care a lot about my followers. I appreciate all my followers. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't got, you know, 10,000, 20,000 followers. I got, you know, like 3,000, I think. And I'm, I'm thankful for all of them, man. You know, even the ones that might not say something, you know, the fact that you're looking at it, you know what I'm saying? It, it, you know, it feels good, you know. They go on my story and see I got like 200, 300, 400 people looking at it. You know, um, it's it's cool, man, for real. I definitely think that, um, you know, pe we as artists, we definitely got to start being a lot more um, appreciative of the, the real, like the real people that we have following us. Because, you know, of course, you're going to have people that hate and mm -hmm. I mean, you can't you can't avoid that. But, um, you know. Uh, the people that actually show love like all the time, especially you know, with you not being you know mainstream, like definitely show some love back, you know, for real. Most definitely, most definitely. Now, real quick, give us some of your give us give us some of your musical influences. Who have been some of your musical influences? You know, a, you know, being in being being in this musical industry, man. Um, man, I got a few, man. Um, I wouldn't, uh, I don't know, I wouldn't really call them influences per se but like artists that have like stuck out with me as far as like their musicality, as far as the way they move, you know what I'm saying? Um, what they represent, you know, um, when I was, when I was young, like I said, I came up, you know, in the church and stuff. So my grandma, she wasn't really playing about that rap music and that hip hop at first, man. I couldn't listen to nothing. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> but when I got older, you know, my uncle, I definitely, you know, I, I definitely thank my uncle, you know, for putting me into, you know, Hip hop and R and B. Right, so, right. Um, one of the first artists he put me on was um Nas. Okay. He put me on Nas early in the game. He put me on Nas. He put me on Jay Z. He put me on Currency. He put me on um Wu Tang. Okay. And, and Biggie. So like a whole lot of like the old head artists. You know what I'm saying? He put me on with a lot of them, and um, you know, like it kind of gave me insight on like you know what hip hop you know it was mm -hmm. at first what rap was. And then as I was getting older, I was starting to get introduced to more artists that really kind of, you know, like stuck out to me. Like, of course, you know, everybody a fan of Drake, you know what I'm saying? Um, Kanye, 
definitely a big fan of his production, man. His production over the years has been crazy. Like, right. And, um, with me also being a producer as well as an artist, like, you know, that kind of, you know, sticks with me. Um, uh, fabulous, fabulous. Okay. He, he's okay. definitely, he definitely one of my favorites, uh, rap wise. He's smooth. Um, and then as far as, you know, like the trap, cause you know, I got, I love the trap too. Gotta show love to the trap, you know, Jeezy, um, you know, OJ the Juice Man, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Gucci, those, those are the guys that was really like popping like that when I was a kid. Um, and then, you know, uh, the drill era, the drill era that came around when I was like in high school and it was crazy, bro. It was crazy. Like Chief Keith, like he really like switched everything up. Like when he came in and he like switched the game up, like it was so many people that was on him like fast, bro. He spread, mm -hmm. he spread like wildfire. Um, I'm trying to think who else. Um, Rick Ross. Okay. The whole, the whole, the whole MMG. Honestly, the whole MMG. Rick Ross, Meat Mill, um, Wale. Like the whole MMG. Like they, okay. they definitely stuck with me heavy, like real heavy through middle school, high school, and college too. You know okay. Um, I would definitely have to say as a collector, like them three, they definitely stuck with me hard. Okay. Um, and then here recently with some of these new artists, you know, these new artists, they cool, you know what I'm saying? But um, I just want to see, you know, how they fare, like, later on down the line with years to come. Like, the people I just named, like, they've been around for a minute. So they definitely, you know, got their stamp in the industry for real. Okay. Okay. Now, real quick, man. So, you know, let me ask you this. So whenever you're preparing – for any uh show that you do um uh, mentally up here how do you how do you mentally you know get yourself prepared like what do you like what is your method before you before you do a show um honestly bro i just i just hype myself up bro you know what i'm saying like i said i've i've been in the band for so long bro like performing is like it's just like second nature you know what i'm saying like i'm used to you know, being on the field in front of hundreds of thousands of people and they just screaming and yelling and I just got, you know, hella people behind me playing. And even when I was in the ranks playing, you know, it's, you know, it was just kind of second nature. So right. when transition from being in the group to being like an actual artist, you know, I kind of treated it the same way. Like I already know the music because my music, you know what I'm saying? Um, so it's really just a matter of me just going out there and doing it, you know, um, and then, you know, also, too, being in the band, like, you're going to have people that, you know, they, they like what you're doing, but then you're going to have people that don't like what you're doing, you know. So mm -hmm. getting that um, kind of mental strength to where you know, you know, you got to put on performance regardless of whatever the room is looking like or whatever, you know, whoever looking like, you know, you, you still got to put on performance. So I definitely feel like, you know, the band definitely, you know, pushed me in that right direction as far as performance go. Okay, okay. Now, in your experience of being in the band, man, what has been the most rewarding about being being a part of a band, being a part of a family base, you know, if you will, and just really having that fun and that and that love and that passion for for music? Um, it's it's been crazy, man, because you know, like you said, it's just like a family, bro. You know, just like with your family, you be having days where you just like, man, I just want to go to the crib and be with my people, man. You know. And then you have some days you're like, man, I ain't even trying to go home, man. They're going to get on my nerves. I ain't got time for this shit today. <laughs> like, <laughs> right, right. It, it's, it's really like that. But, you know, at the end of the day, like, it's one of them opportunities that you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't take back. You know, it's, right. it's definitely like, uh, um, it's definitely like a once in a lifetime thing for real. And it's, um, it's dope, man, because there's so many people in one, in one, you know, organization, but everybody really just kind of moved together. You know, everybody just be on the same page. And it's like when you get a group of people together and they all on the same page and they just clicking like that, like it, you can't beat that, man. You know, Most definitely. and, then, Most you know, definitely. people definitely, you know, not judgmental. Like you got all types of people in the band, you know. Um, so it's like it kind of teaches you that it's OK to be yourself. You know, like we're not going to judge you as long as you're here to, you know, handle business. It is what it is. So I just kind of take those same lessons and I just apply it to you know, the music in my personal life and in my own business and, you know, whatever, you know. Okay, okay. I feel that. I feel that. I respect that. All right, so now, real quick, 10 to 15 years from now, where do you see yourself? 
Oh boy, I'm gonna be paid. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna be paid. Um honestly, bro though, um definitely definitely see myself in a way better position I'm in right now. I mean I'm not in the worst position, but you know what I'm saying? I'm twenty four right now, fifteen years from now, you know, I'll be pushing thir uh forty, excuse me. So um around that time, you know, I definitely plan on being well established as far as the music goes, as far as my businesses go, as far as, you know, everything like um, and of course, you know, it'll be, you know, struggles and trials and tribulations along the way. But I mean, if I didn't made it this far, I mean, I feel like I can do anything, you know what I'm saying? Considering what I already been through. So, that I part. Definitely, you know, I got that mindset now that if, you know, if God, you know, allows me to get to where I want to go, I mean, it ain't going to be no stopping me, you know? Okay. 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 So now again, switching gears, man, because, you know, we have, you know, we have, we have this young generation out here now, man. And, you know, they're always watching. They're always, they're always listening, man. So, mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to the younger generation, man, and them coming up in the ranks and them, you know, want to become, you know, rappers and, and singers and, you know, doing what they do musically, man, what advice can you give to the younger generation to help them to succeed in their, in their career choice? Um, man, honestly, just do it, man. It ain't nothing to it but to do it, man. Even if you, you know, like, you put it down for a while, pick it back up. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like a lot of people look at social media now, and they look at how a lot of these artists are now, and they just kind of see, like, you know, they see the glamorous life, and they, they see, you know, how everything is, and they just kind of expect for everything to just go that way. But, I mean, you know, not everybody is destined to be that kind of artist. You know, not everybody is meant to be in that position where they just got all this stuff. But everybody has a position. You just got to find out what yours is and play it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to be, you know, the biggest dude around here with, you know, 100,000, you know, in cash just riding around. Yeah. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, but I'm going to be me, though. You know what I'm saying? Right. I still make good music that people like to listen to. And of course I'm gonna get that bag because that's what I do. But, you know, you just you just gotta learn, you know, who you are as a person, as an artist, and go with it. You know what I'm saying? Because once you once you really being yourself and you really being genuine, like people are gonna respect that. You know what I'm saying? Not if you out here trying to be somebody that you not. You know what right. I'm saying? If you know you ain't, you know what I'm saying, in the streets doing all this stuff, man, why are you talking about it like that? You know what I'm right. saying? If, right. you're not, if you if you ain't out here, you know, killing people every five minutes, why are you, you talking about, man, look, you're going to get caught up. You know right. Dev so, <laughs> part, dev part. You, you really just got to play your role, man. You really got to, you got to be yourself with it. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that's why a lot of people that really rock with me and they rock with my music, I feel like that's why they do because I don't really try to, you know, play like on somebody else. I don't really like to, you know, talk about things that ain't got nothing to do with me. You know, mm -hmm. so I just make music that I like to listen to and that my people like to listen to. And then that's just it. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. And then okay. I feel like another thing with a, this younger generation, a lot of times, a lot of these people, they depend on, they depend on labels too much. They depend on labels to do everything for them. But this in this new generation, bro, it is so easy to be an independent artist and still get up. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. You don't have to, you know, sign to a label and you know, give them you pretty much in order to get that bag, bro. You can get that bag on your own. You just gotta know how to do it. You gotta, you gotta get right. plugged in. You gotta talk to people. You gotta network. You know what I'm saying? Like, that part. You know how we hooked up. You know what I'm saying? Like we seen each other at an event, and you know what I'm saying we got our contact information, and you know, bam, here we go. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. It's, that part. That, it's just bro. simple as that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You know. So I, de okay. I definitely like the young generation, though. You know what I'm saying? I feel like. You know, I'm a part of the young generation a little bit. You know, I'm a little older than a lot of artists out here now. But at the same time, you know, I'm, I definitely, you know, feel like I connect with the young generation too. But um, I like what they got going, man. You know, it's different kinds of music, different styles. Like, music is changing. Music is definitely changing. And I feel like as long as they keep, they, they, as long as they keep their mind right, they'll be fine, bro. They'll be fine. Most definitely, most definitely. Well, I hope all you young generations, generations out there, you know, I hope you guys are getting this info, man. It's, it's a lot of gems being dropped right now, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, with that being said, bro, so, you know, what, it, what has been the most rewarding, you know, just overall, aside from your music career, but what has been the most rewarding 
thing that you've learned about in life that has kept you motivated, that has kept you going? Man, um, the most important thing that I've learned in life that's really kept me going, man, is nobody is going to do nothing for me. So I got to get it on my own. And I don't mean that in a way like people don't, you know, help you out and don't, you know, assist you along the way. But what I mean is ain't nobody going to put the bag in your hand. You got to go get it. Mm -hmm. Like ain't nobody going to put that lifestyle that you want in your hand. You got to go get it. You know what I'm saying? Everything that I got right now, I've been grinding for it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm still not, you know, where I want to be. But compared to where I've been, man, I'm living a life, bro. <laughs> you know what right. I'm saying? <laughs> like, for real. Like, and I feel like that's a big thing now. People just got to be appreciative of where they at before they get to the next level. Because, like, you think about it, bro. Like, I know the United States is, is messed up, bro. But, like, these third, world, these third world countries, man, they got it rough, bro. Like, it's so easy for somebody to just start a business and just get some bread going and stuff you know, right here in the United States. Now, don't get me wrong, the United States is still crazy. Right. Like, in these third world countries, bro, like, they can't even call 911 to get help sometimes. You know what I'm right. saying? Right, right. So, like, I feel like people just got to be a lot more appreciative of what they have before they move up to the next level. You know what I'm saying? Because this God can take that stuff real quick from you, real quick, you know? So That part. Okay, okay. Like I said, guys, I hope you guys are enjoying this episode, man. Like I said, we are talking with the one and only Jay the One, man. He is live right here with us, you know what I'm saying, for the podcast, you know what I'm saying, special edition. Know that. All right, so real quick, man. So you know, so now when it comes to your music and your lyrics, man, what is the model and the message behind your music? Like, what are what what is the message that you're trying to get across to the people for them to be able to understand and relate to? Um, Honestly, bro, I'm just... I'm just talking about my life, bro. I'm just talking about my life, talking about, you know, the stuff that I've been through, the stuff that I've seen, you know, people that is that are close to me, I've seen them go through, you know. Um, and then people that even people that's not close to me, you know, people that um uh, I might not be as close with as others, but people that, you know, I've seen go through things like like I said before, bro, you know, in today's age, like, being genuine is really the name of the game. Like, you can't be out here talking about this stuff that is going on in these streets or going on in these households or going on wherever if you ain't really living that life. You know what I'm saying? Like, you really, you got to be yourself. You got to, you know, you got to talk about who you are. You know what I'm saying? Not who you want to be for the people or who you want to be just to get the bad. Like, people, you know, they got to they gotta start being more real about themselves. So, me personally, man, whenever I, I make music, like, I try to make it you know, relatable. Um, sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll make it less relatable but more fun. Like, it's like, a, you know, a party track or something like that, you know, just something to keep the energy going, keep it going. But, yeah, man, I try to, you know, I definitely try to use my vocabulary too. You know what I'm saying? I don't really like to say the same things over and over again in every song because that joint will get boring fast. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> That'll get boring fast. Okay, so let me ask you this, so man, when you when you hear the people that sing your lyrics, that that recite word for word, you know, your song, like, what does that do to you on the inside to know that you created something that people have listened to so much to the point where they if they see you or they or you if y'all or if y'all are in the same vicinity, they're literally reciting it right back to you. How does that feel for you? It's crazy, man, for real. Cause like I said, bro, like my personal music that I've been writing like all over the years, like I never really shared it with anybody. Like I would know it. Like I would know my bars. Like if I'm hearing a beat like on the radio or something like that, I'll be rapping my own verse. And then somebody been in the car like, bro, what you rapping, bro? Oh, this is my shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? But the fact that I'm actually, you know, putting out music and um, people know it, like it's, it's crazy, bro. Like um, when we had dropped Make It Move, I think we had like a kickback or like something like that, like a little while after that. And we were playing the song, and then, like, everybody in the house was, like, rapping my verse. I was like, yo, like, that's crazy, bro. You know what I'm saying? And me just yeah. in a small setting like that, like, that, you know, meant a lot to me, just the fact that people know the words like that. You know what I'm saying? Make a move ain't even really, like, a, a conscious song. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's That's a party track. You know what I'm saying? So right. Definitely okay. a lot, man. For real. Okay. Okay. Give us your – now, give us your dream place to perform, man. Where – you know, I'm pretty sure you, you know, you've been different places and several different places, man, to perform. But give us your dream place that you would love to perform in front of millions and millions of fans. 
Um, honestly, bro, and I know this is probably going to sound like unorthodox, but as an artist to perform, I've always wanted to perform at um, Coachella. Okay. And the reason why I say that is because Coachella is really a, like an international event. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I would definitely perform at like, you know, Rolling Loud or, or uh, Out the Mud, you know, the joint they be doing in Charlotte or, um, you know, like New York, whatever. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Coachella is really like an international event. And like, it be fans from like different countries in the world just flying here just for the concert, bro. Like, Coachella is hard, you know what I'm saying? Um, as like an instrumentalist or something like that, if I'm playing behind somebody, mm, I'm thinking maybe New York. Okay. Maybe at an opera hall or something like that, just because you know the acoustics is crazy in there. Right. But, uh, as an artist, yeah, I would def I would definitely love to perform at Coachella one day. For real. Okay. <clears throat> okay. All right. Now, real quick, man. Kind of, kind of want to go back for a second. Give us your your child one of your one of your main childhood memories. Now, what what was one of your childhood memories growing up as a kid? Um, one of my favorite childhood memories as a kid. Um, mm, 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 I'm trying to think. Oh man, um, this might this might sound kind of bad, but um, when I was a kid. Me and my grandma, we had uh, went to this church, same church I was telling you about. She was a choir director at, and like I said, I was trying to stop singing. I was trying to learn how to play the drums. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, the pastor at the church, um, his kids, um, they were they were like a little mean. They were like like some little bullies. But you know they the pastor's kids, so you can't really yeah. bully the pastor's kids. You gonna you gonna get whooped. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> I went up to the drums to try to play the drums but the people back there was like stop stop messing with them drums go ahead now go ahead you know how they like yeah. to shoot away kids but the pastor's kid went up to the drums and they ain't say nothing to them they got to play the drums and i'm just like what i was like yeah. right. so low key, low key like and that, that used to happen all the time like but because of that like it kind of made me like hungry like to really like be like the best when it came to music. Like, no matter what, you know, avenue I might be in, like, just, you know, being denied the opportunity to really do something that I really wanted to do, you know, just because of the fact that I wasn't, you know, somebody else. It kind of put me in that mindset, like, early on, like, all right, bet, say that. <laughs> okay. we'll, see, we'll see who really who really playing at the end, you know. Most definitely, most definitely. And a lot of times I think, man, that's, truly where you know the life lesson comes in that because when you like you said when you experience things like that you go through things like that it does show you you know it's like you know yeah you may have not gotten that opportunity then but when you step into your own form you, and you're walking in your own lane you know people start to recognize and realize like yo like he's really doing this shit it's like okay you know not, yeah. not, not, i kind of you know, not you know it's, now i see why he was you know wanting to do this now i see why you know the the you know the drive and the the push to want to do this was there. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So it, it wakes it wakes them up too. You know, exactly. and so you know that's another reason why um, I put this podcast together, man. Because you know I want people that from the outside looking in, I want them to be able to you know have an idea in general idea of where these artists is coming from, where they're you know where they, you know how they came up. You know some of the, the uh, some of the advice they had to take, some of the root the things that they had to you know do for themselves. Yeah. To rise up, you know what I'm saying, to make it to the top. So, man, definitely, I definitely man, respect definitely. what you got going on, too, bro, because it's, it's not a lot of people that's really, you know, trying to put, you know, independent artists on like that, you know what I'm saying? Regardless of, you know, whoever, you know, who team you might be on or whoever you might be dealing with or whatever, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a lot of people that really just, you know, they kind of just stay to themselves and they don't really, you know, they be trying to, you know, act some type of way, but I definitely, you know what I'm saying? Like like I said, bro, when we first linked up at that event, bro, I was like, yeah, bro, genuine, bro, you know what I'm saying? Like like I said, I was supposed to have been on this joint, man, but you know, I was busy, man, but I'm here now, and I'm coming most back. Most definitely, most definitely, and like I said, I definitely, you know, again, I definitely appreciate you, man, you know what I'm saying? Because I know, you, like I said, again, you're a very busy man, I hear you got to, you know, you, I get, you know, I get to the money, get to the bag, as they say, oh, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, uh, two more things I want to kind of, I want to I want to talk to you about, man. So real quick, so 
you know, being a part of this industry, man, you know, if there was, if there is any, if there was, if there, were, if there could be anything that you change about yourself, uh, your artistry, your music, your lyrics, um, yourself, yourself on a personal level, you know, would there be any change or would, or do you, or do you not have any regrets at all? No, I ain't got no regrets at all, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I live a life where I, I just choose not to have regrets. You know what I'm saying? Cause like, yeah, I might have, you know, done some stuff, you know, that might have, like, afterwards, I might have been like, dang, go on. But then at the same time, man, it's just lesson learned. You know what I'm right. saying? That's all it is, just lessons learned. So at the end of the day, man, I wouldn't change nothing about me. You know what I'm saying? Because I am who I am. I'm, I am who I am because of what I've been through. So I wouldn't change nothing that I've been through, regardless of how much pain, you know, it might have been or how much drama or stress or whatever. Like, I am who I am. Okay. Either you're okay. gonna take me or you're not. <laughs> that part. You know, that part you can that's hey, that's all you can do at this point. You know what I'm saying? To all right, so let me ask you this one. Let me get your feedback and your input on these verses, man. You know, we've been having a lot, and I do mean a lot of versus battles, man, uh, produced by two of the greatest iconic legends in, of our time, Timberland and Swin and Swiss Beats, man. So I gotta get your input, man. What do you think about two masterminds like that coming together? As a as a unit, and just once again rebringing back, you know, just music from the '90s and the 2000s and the 2000s mm -hmm. era, and where we at now. Like, what is your whole thought process on that? Honestly, bro, when they first started doing that joint during the quarantine, I knew it was gonna blow up. Like, I was thinking about the concept of it itself, and I was like, these these dudes are literally doing like what DJs have been doing for years like you know how many mixtapes these djs have put out with such and such versus such and such and it'll just be straight tracks of all their music like their best hits but this time like they're taking it <clears throat> excuse me and turning it into like a literal like in-person event like uh of course you know at first quarantine it was only a few people in the room but then you know with soldier and bow wow did their version it was the first time they had a crowd and i was like yo like they showing up you know what i'm saying so i'm like this is this is going to be something that I feel like they're going to continue, like, for a while. I, I like it, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, the verses with Rick Ross and, um, was it 2 Chains, right? Rick Ross. Yeah, yeah, Chains. yeah. Um, the verses with, uh, of course, Gucci and Jeezy. That was crazy. Okay. <laughs> um, the verses with, uh, who else is up there, man? I'm trying to think. Snoop Dogg and, um, daggone, who was we with? DMX. Yeah, DMX, man. And then, of course, you know, after DMX left, man, I was, man, crazy, I, bro. Right. And and that was my next question, man. You know, like, you know, cause, you know, hearing the news about X, man, you know, you know, where were you and where, what was going through your mind, you know, when you heard about the, the passing of X? Man, I um I was in the crib, I believe, bro. I, I think I had just got home. I was about to leave or something like that. But I just remember – um seeing the uh the joint come down my instagram feed and i just paused i was like i was like come on man i know not i know not i know not not yeah bro. you know what i'm saying i remember like a few days prior before the official statement came out like somebody had put out some joint talking about he was dead i was like come on now but then you know they came around with the joint saying that he wasn't out he wasn't uh dead yet he was just you know in the hospital so i was like okay cool cool i i thought everything was gonna be cool man but then right you know, right Got the bad news and I was hurt, man. I was, I was, I was about hurt over X about the same way I was with Kobe for real. Because when that happened to Kobe, I was like, Kobe is my exactly, exactly. I for real. Exactly. But, so you know, so speaking, so speaking on that, man. Um, you know, we've had so many, man, so many legends slash athletes that have, you know, uh, you know, unfortunately have transitioned and, and are no longer on this earth, man. But when you think about people you know, that truly changed the game. You think about people, like you said, like Kobe Bryant. You think about Nipsey Hussle. You think about Pop Smoke. You think about, you know, DMX. You know, you think about Whitney Houston. You know, some of the greatest of the greatest, you know, that have, you know, transitioned, man. What did it, what does, you know, watching their career and listening to them and, and you know, and seeing the impact that they left. Now I'll turn, the, now I'll turn the question to you. What type of impact are you trying to leave on the entire universe? Um, honestly, bro, if I had to leave any kind of impact on anybody, man, it's just uh, work hard, man. You know, work hard, chase your dreams, don't be afraid 
to step out on a limb and really go for what you want out of life because you never know you might fuck around and get to it. You know what I'm saying? Like for a long time, you know, I always felt like I was a hard worker. Like every every job I've ever worked at, like I've always either got you know, offered to go to, like, a promotional level or something like that, or they just, you know, commented on how hard I worked or how good of a worker I was. So I already knew that I worked hard, but, you know, being where I was at in my hometown, Tarboro, like, it ain't really a lot of opportunity out there. So for a while, you know, I just thought, you know, that's all I was going to be was just a hard worker. But then, you know, I got out of, you know, my hometown and started exploring and, you know, seeing the world for what it was. And I'm like, yo, like, I could really, you know, put you know some stuff together and really like you know make a name for myself and like do some big stuff but you know at the same time coming from there you know it was kind of just like let me not get too ahead of myself let me just do what I got to do and just see where things take me but you know thankfully man God been on my side and you know he just he just been pushing me you know what I'm saying so uh, to answer your question if I had to leave any kind of impact man it's just to work hard really go for your dreams don't be afraid um don't look somebody tell you no bet i'm gonna figure out a way to make it work on my own or i'm gonna get so proficient in the area where i'm at you have no choice but to tell me yes when i come back if i come back because i might end up just going to somebody else (laughs) exactly (laughs) exactly okay okay man that's such very powerful info man such powerful gems being dropped i hope you guys out there are are really taking this in i hope you guys are jotting this down man because you know you can you guys can apply it to y'all to y'all life in some kind of way form or fashion you know what i'm saying so last but not least man you know when it's all when it's all said and done man you know what is it about you you know step, step away from music for a second but what is it mainly about you that you want the people to, you know, remember about you at the end of the day? Um, really, man, just uh, remember me for the good times, man. You know, good times. I mean, of course, you know, I'm not perfect. You know, I made mistakes just like anybody. I know, you know, there are a couple of people that probably, you know, uh, don't want to see me where I am. There's probably a couple of people that are probably happy to see where I am, but probably upset at the way that we might have fell out or whatever. But, it's all love on my end, man. You know, I ain't got no beef with nobody. I ain't got no hate with nobody. I just want I just want more love in the world, man. So I just um I don't know. I just uh <laughs> I guess really just, you know, see me for who I am and not who anybody tries to portray me to be. Right, right. For real. Okay. Okay. Well Jay the one bro, listen. I have truly, truly enjoyed these this this session with you, man. It has truly been impactful. It's all it's been inspiring. It's been you know lit, as we like to use the term. Um, I definitely can't wait, man, to to continue to watch you more and see the progression that you bring, the the energy that you bring, man. Um, you know, I I gotta say again, I take my hat off to you. I salute you, bro, and definitely keep doing your thing, keep grinding, keep applying that pressure like only the way you can. Oh yeah. You know, but real quickly before we wrap this thing on up, man, where can the people follow and tap in with you at? Man, uh, follow me on Instagram, aka underscore finesse with two s's. Um, you can follow me on Twitter, same name, aka underscore finesse with two s's. Um. Finna have a Facebook page here soon. Ain't got one here yet, but finna have a Facebook page here soon. Subscribe to me on YouTube, Jada One. Uh, I think that's all I'm on. I ain't even really. I mean, I'm on TikTok, but I ain't. I don't really be on TikTok like that, man. So I ain't even gonna tell nobody to follow me up there. If you follow me up there, then I'll probably start posting some content. But <laughs> <laughs> most right definitely, now, it's, just, it's just sitting there. But yeah, man, stay tuned though for sure because we got new music coming, new content, new videos. Do everything, man. So stay tuned for sure. Okay, and and one more, and one other thing. So where can people find your music at right now? Currently, that's that's out on all that's on platforms right now. Where can they find your music? Oh yeah, man. Look, Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal, Pandora, Amazon Music. Uh, I don't I don't know whatever whatever platform you use to find music on, bro. You can find the music up there, man. Uh, YouTube as well. YouTube as well for sure. Okay, most definitely. Well, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, once again, this has been my time. I am your host, the one and only, the legend, Hunter J23, coming to you live with a very special edition. You know what I'm saying? We want to take this opportunity right now to thank you guys for joining us. Thank you guys for watching. 
And I look forward to seeing you guys again on another edition. Let it be the same fucking. I'm your host, Hancho J23. From, from my boy, J the One, we out, guys. You already know. Y'all be easy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.